Hi, this is Jack Lifton, and this is Critical Materials Corner. And today I'm very pleased to have as my guest and co-host, Byron King. And we're going to start off today by talking about Byron's favorite topic, I think, and certainly one in which he has extensive expertise. Byron, I'm, I'm going to blindside you today. Tell me, where's the price of gold going? All of, Everybody listening is fascinated by this topic. Where is the price of gold going and why? Well, good, good day, Jack. And you certainly don't blindside me when you ask me about the price of gold. Uh, it's truly the first thing I look at when I wake up. I grab my little iPhone and I check the price of gold even before I roll out of bed. Um, and then I spend the rest of the day, you know, uh, taking it from there. Where's the price of gold going in the, you know, relatively uh, near future? It's going up, okay? Uh, uh, a couple of weeks ago, a week and a half ago, I wrote an article in Investor Intel about, uh, I, I called it Russia deploys a new weapon, so the gold weapon. Um, you know, think what you want about Ukraine, think what you want about Russia, about Putin, whatever. We're not, but by, by putting a relative floor, a bumpy floor under the price of gold, 5,000 rubles per gram, although it is negotiable, says the Russians, but by putting something of a floor under that uh, price of gold with rubles, which are now created, now related to natural gas, and soon with Russian oil and Russian ag and Russian minerals and Russian everything else, by putting that floor under there, They've really de-risked or, or they've risked up, let, let's say, the downside of traders who want to take gold down. Uh, they've, they've put gold uh, right, right about now. Gold's about $63 per gram if you translate to rubles, um, which is right around, you know, like where the price is, 1800 and something dollars an ounce, $1,900. You know, it, it's right in there. The, there is a floor underneath the price of gold. The traders, the paper traders, not the real gold traders, the paper traders can't go down below that floor or they get arbitraged. You know, they, 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 risk, they risk going underwater and, you know, staying there and get drowned. So the price of gold has a, has a pretty decent floor under it right now. I'm, I'm happy with that. Uh, it, it, it protects the producers, too, uh, because, you know, if you're producing gold at, you know, a thousand bucks, 1200 bucks an ounce in terms of your cost all in, um, you know, you, you've got a nice, you know, 50 percent or so profit margin. Um, uh, on top of you. So uh, I, I, that's the first part. That's just kind of the second part of that question is, uh, you know, gold is, a, is an inflation hedge, uh, uh, has been traditionally. And uh, we have inflation out there, as, as everybody knows who can, who's watching or listening to this broadcast. You know, uh, you, know you, you see it at the gas station. You see it when you get your electric bill. You see it at the grocery store. You see it when you buy clothing. You buy an airline ticket. Inflation is structural. It's built into the, the economy. If nothing else, the price of gold is going to be drifting up, if not, you know, bouncing up, um, you know, on, on event-driven, uh, you know, news. The, the United States went off the gold standard in, I believe, 1971 or two. I, I can't remember. Uh, but, uh, and uh, officially, the world is certainly not on a gold standard. But it sounds to me like what you're saying is that we're drifting to a commodity standard to underlie uh, our money, yeah, underpin our money. Absolutely, yeah. Um, I actually, I, I do remember. It was August fifteenth, nineteen seventy-one. Um, I was in eleventh uh, grade, and uh, <laughs> I was in preseason football. Uh, and uh, you know, you would think when you're in preseason football, you're getting ready for high school football, that uh, you know that you would be thinking about football. I walked in the next morning and you know, we go to the team meeting and everything. And, and our coach is up there and said, you know, he said, Nixon closed the gold window last night. And we're all looking mm -hmm. at him like, what the, what are you talking about? We're talking about like football and stuff. Well, you know, that's a, that's, that's a whole nother story, but we've been on this sort of fiat dollar standard ever since the full faith and credit of the United States government, as opposed to gold. Right. Uh, and uh, you know, and, and, you know, you can argue a lot that the technicalities of a gold standard and what is it and goes back well, to 1914 and goes back to the Napoleonic Wars. You know, there's a lot of history there. But but there was something that always kept, you know, the monetary base under control. Since then, since 1971, it's only been the full faith and credit of the government and the world's belief that the U.S. government won't somehow, you know, pull a rug out from under the whole world and just let the whole thing crash. My view on that, Jack, and, here, and this is that 
you know, again, gets back to the Ukraine-Russia situation. By putting these immense sanctions on Russia and, you know, taking their sovereign reserves by the hundreds of billions of dollars, and even things like going around grabbing the oligarchs' money. You don't have to like oligarchs. I don't like oligarchs. I don't like the American oligarchs. As I don't know any, I don't know any Russian oligarchs. I, I've never met a Russian oligarch. I've never been on a yacht or anything else in my in my whole life. Uh, but but I, but I know some American oligarchs. I mean, I you know met a few along the way. I don't yeah, like but, that. Byron, but excuse they took me. All the, they took all that money, and and when you did that, you you crashed the full faith and credit of the United States. Seven billion other people in the world who have dollars are saying to themselves, "Whoa." I mean, you know, okay, the U.S. is really mad about Russia and Putin and Ukraine. Okay, I get that. But when you take all their money uh, without, you know, due process, without just like we don't like you, we're taking your money. You've just really undermined the uh, the credibility of the dollar. So that gets to that other point you made that are we are are we moving to another standard? Yeah, I mean, not overnight, not in the next five minutes or the next five days or maybe the next five months, but we are moving uh, to something else. Are you not saying that arguably Russia is now on the gold standard? It's, you know, it is one of those things that that it's it's a work in progress. It is a development mm-hmm. in progress. Uh, you know, a lot of people say, oh, Russia, they're just a gas station with nuclear weapons, to which I say there's nothing wrong with gas stations. And there right. sure isn't anything wrong with nuclear weapons, okay? Uh, I mean, I'm a, you know, I'm an old Navy guy. I was a nuclear weapons officer. I know a few things about nuclear weapons. You don't want to screw around with a country that has nuclear weapons, and nobody will. You know, I mean, and so this isn't putting sanctions on Cuba for 63 years, which have done nothing, or North Korea for 70 years, which have done nothing, or Iran for 45 years, which has done nothing, you know, or, or sanctioning Libya or sanctioning Syria or beating up on some little country that just, you know, they have a few, you know, they have a few tanks and a few armored cars and this little crappy little military that doesn't work too well. You know, when you're not, you know, you're not going to push Russia around. I mean, yeah, I know. Okay. Yeah. They only have a GDP the size of fill in the blank, Texas, Texas, Netherlands, Portugal, Italy, you know, whatever. But they, they produce a lot of electricity, a lot of steel. They have an aerospace industry. They, you know, they're a technically sophisticated country. They graduate more PhDs in physics than we do, that's for sure. And so, uh, uh, and, and they have 6,000 nuclear weapons and they have missiles and submarines and bombers and everything else. No, you know, you're, this is not going to be one of those situations where you're, where you're in the long term, you push them around. Whatever happens between Russia and the rest of the world is going to be a negotiated settlement. And it's really just a question of, you know, who, who's going to come out on the good side of the negotiation? Because nobody's going to invade Russia uh, if they don't want to get nuked. I, I know that Russia, which in my opinion is has is now on a gold and other commodity standard, mm-hmm. is, is doing very well in negotiating with its peers, which are Saudi Arabia, which is effectively, uh, Saudi Arabia is the only country I've ever been to that actually has gold in circulation. They like gold in Saudi Arabia. The Chinese love gold. In China, gold is a symbol of luck. The more gold you have, the luckier you are. And they they like gold. All gold in China is mined by the People's Liberation Army, not by private contractors. That tells you something about, well, about Chinese uh, corruption and, and Chinese state policy. But the, the point I'm making is, if I when I add those three countries together, I get perhaps the world's largest producers of oil and the world's largest consumers of oil. And they seem to be, in my, a gold block. What do you think? I tend to agree with you. I mean, you know, you, you know, Russia's, what are, what, it's 11 time zones, huge country, you know, mm-hmm. uh, among the top three oil producers. Uh, for as much as Russia and, and has had its issues with Saudi with the religious side, and there right. are many, and they are deep. Oh yeah, uh, the Russians and the Saudis are working; they're playing nicely in the same sandbox, so to speak. Uh, the Chinese are more than happy to more than happy to to take the Russian natural gas, the Russian uh, petroleum, the Russian minerals, Russian lumber, Russian agriculture. You know, China needs everything. Uh, and China and Saudi are more than happy to work together. We, you know, everybody who's watching this has probably heard the stories of the looming petro yuan, where China, Russia, or China, Saudi 
We're going to be trading oil for yuan. Um, and so, yeah, you've, you've got you've got two of the three world's largest oil producers, the U.S. being the other of the three. But you know, we use everything we pull out of the ground, and then we still import a whole lot. Um, so you got Russia, Saudi, which is a whole bunch of oil, and then China, which world's largest consumer, but it's the world's largest manufacturing power. I mean, it's the world's largest CO2 emitter. China emits more CO2 than the whole rest of the world put together. I mean, China produces a billion, with a B, tons of steel every year, which is 14 times more than the United States. Here, and here's one. Uh, nobody knows this. Uh, I, China uses more steel every year in just its shipbuilding industry. You know, Navy ships, uh, cargo ships, fishing boats, more steel every year in shipbuilding than the United States produces steel, period. You know, you can take every pound of steel that the United States produces every year, and it, it wouldn't build all the ships in China I, in one year. I always tell people that China produces enough steel each day to replace the United States Navy afloat. So please think about that. And and I'm sure I'm sure you think that more than I do. Well, so we're saying I also noted that the Chinese are paying the Russians for things, including maybe oil in RMB, their currency. Mm -hmm. And that allows the Russians to buy everything they need in the way of furniture, toilet paper, whatever, what have you, in from China. So don't, don't, don't that, we buy everything we need from China? You go to Walmart, yes, you go to Target, you yes, go to wherever but the, you know, the Chinese all this made in China. The Chinese could sanction us. They're they're actually quite angry at us. They think we're we're putting uh, we're putting them down as a secondary as some kind of lower order of human. That's their opinion in China is that we look down upon them. That's what they think is racism, and it's interesting. Nobody in the United States pays attention to that, and we do we do discriminate against Asian Americans because they're too goddamn smart. So we make sure they can't take our places okay the chinese are very aware of this the point is they can do without us maybe we cannot do without them that is the real problem for us you, I, would, you would think the wake-up call you know if nothing else the wake-up call should have come two years ago when the covid uh you know pandemic broke out and at least a few people in the united states woke up and said gee where do we get most of our medical supplies from where do we get our our, our, our pharmaceuticals where you know where, who makes who makes who makes the pharmaceuticals or who makes the things that you use to make the pharmaceuticals if you go far enough back up the supply chain it's all it's it's china i mean i you know this, these little pill things that you get at your pharmacy where they put the pills in and you know and all that stuff where do you think these things come from you think there's a factory in the united states something that makes no this stuff comes from china and i mean the plastic that's in here comes from china uh, made out of you know Saudi Arabian oil perhaps, but uh, uh, I mean I mean the the antibiotics you know what is it ninety eight percent of U S antibiotics are imported I mean um, you know all the COVID things you see people with their masks and their PPE and their breathing devices and or if you go to the hospital and they inject you with all the they, you know, where's that stuff come from I I have one in China mostly you know I mean there's a few other places but I mean the bulk of it came from China. Um, and so you, you would think that just on a national security level, you know, people would have said, oh, yeah, you know, we need to do that. And Trump started to do that. But, you know, between Trump and Biden, you know, it's, it's all it's all American politics at its worst, you know. Well, to, to sum up this uh, conversation, two days ago, the president of Rivian, a startup electric uh, truck maker, Mm -hmm. uh, which has an order book already of like 100,000 vehicles, including 80,000 from Amazon for vans, said mm -hmm. he could not meet any of his target dates because he can't get batteries. And he said, everyone is talking about producing lithium. Nobody's talking about what you do with the lithium out of the brine or the mine. And he said, America is woefully short of processing capacity. And I note that the Chinese today have around 60% of the global processing capacity for lithium. And they have enough lithium either in their country or bought and controlled overseas to take all of their target production of EVs between now and 2030. Already in place. We don't have it. And we're prohibiting it from coming into existence through over-regulation. 
And you would think somebody in Washington would understand that you cannot keep slapping yourself in the face and wonder where the pain's coming from. You would think somebody in Washington would understand, but the scary thing is that maybe somebody in Washington really does understand and, the, and that it, it's intentional and they just don't care. They just, they just, they, they love watching the USD industrialize because it meets some other, you know, uh, some Agenda. other objective that they have. And I, you know, uh, I, I, I think that's, that's insanity uh, on their part uh, in terms of, you know, what, what the country is and where the country was coming from. But uh, uh, I, I think there are people there who just, if they do understand it, they just don't care. Uh, and it's not just lithium, Jack, you, we've had this discussion. It's, it's everything. It's nickel, you know, it, it, it's, it's, uh, it's lead. It's, it's, I mean, it's the, it's the indium and the tin solder that they put the little circuit boards together with. It's the, it's the circuit boards themselves. It's the little, you know, capacitors and diodes that go on the circuit boards. You know, do we make that stuff in the U S no, we don't. Nope. You know? No, I mean, uh, you know, just to sum, sum this conversation up, they, they say that Washington is Hollywood for ugly people. I'm going to add to that and say Washington is Harvard for stupid people. Um, anyway, thank, thank you, Byron. We could go out all day long, I'm sure, about this, and we okay. will sooner or later. Thank you, Jack. Uh, uh, and thank you, everybody out there who, who's watching. And, you know, forward, you know, forward this email or forward this email. Uh, this this video to your friends and your colleagues and you know get it get 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 us some exposure get the message out there for us thanks and don't have an accident while you're on your way to your gold broker to buy some to buy some physical metal thank you <laughs>